For this video, I'll be working through the Level 2 2017 Waves exam, working through Question 2. Question 2. Sarah found two pairs of old reading glasses in her neighbour's grandmother's drawer. One pair was quite heavy, made up of glass lenses. The other was quite light, made up of plastic lenses. Sarah has learned from her physics class that glass and plastic has, have different refractive indices, indexes. To investigate further, she places transparent glass and transparent plastic rectangular block together and shines a green laser beam. Good luck finding one of them these days. Show the, rec show the refractive index for plastic is 1.43. Right, so on your formula sheet, you'll find Snell's law. N1 sine theta 1 is equal to N2 sine theta 2. What we're trying to do is show that this N2 is equal to that. So let's do some algebra and rearrange. N1 sine theta 1 divided by sine theta 2 is equal to N2. Right, let's write some stuff down. So N1, that's glass. So this is 1 and this is 2 because it goes from there to there. Um, also, just to check that you're not getting screwed over, um, the angle's always measured from the normal to the to the ray, which in this case they've put in correctly. Previous exams they've put the angle from the boundary to the ray, which is incorrect. Um, you need to do it the other way around. Um, you need it from the ray to the boundary, and that's fine there. So now we have n1 is 1.55 sine, what is it, 40 degrees, divided by sine 44 equals 1.43. It's unitless, just because it's just a, it's really the, it's a ratio between velocities. Um, that's what it really is, and a ratio between wavelengths. Um, if your calculator is not in degrees, you'll have a bad time. Right, if the angle of incidence in the glass becomes greater than the critical angle, then the light is totally internally reflected and ref no refraction takes place. Calculate the critical angle for the glass plastic boundary to three significant figures. Right, so that the critical angle just means theta 2 is equal to 90 degrees. So it's, is it the same again? No, it's not. We're trying to find theta 1. So now we need to do same formula up here. We're going to rearrange for theta 1. So we're going to go n2 sine theta 2. I'm going to move that n1 underneath. Divide by n1. And then I'm going to take the sine inverse, because I get left with the sine theta 1 is equal to that, divided by n1. Take the sine inverse of this. Oh, you can't see that. Sine inverse of this, and that'll give me the angle. And if you plug it all in, so I'll just do the, put the numbers, well, okay. Sine theta 2, or sine 90, that's just equal to 1. So you just got sine, um, we'll do it, sine inverse, what's n2? 1.43. 1.43 over 1.55 is equal to 67.3 degrees. Cool. Next question. Oh, this around. On the diagram below shows a simplified version of glass lens in used in reading glasses. Draw the ray, ray diagram to find the positions of both focal points. Ooh, both focal points. Um, label, ooh, that's, I'll highlight that actually, otherwise I'll stuff it up. Label a focal point, a ah, focal point on the diagram below. It's interesting, it's a contradicting statement, but whatever. So, convex lens. In parallel, out through what would have been the focal point to the tip of the image. Now this is a, this is a nice thing you can do with these uh, lenses, straight through the apex of the mirror. Can we do that? Yeah we can. This won't help, our, help us find our um, focal point but it's kind of neat just chucking it in there. Um, and now if we go do this thing in reverse, out parallel from this uh, image and then back to the object. Here we go, here's focal point um, and here's another focal point F2 but 
yeah, that's a strange question why they've asked for both and given one, but whatever. State the focal length for the above lens. Each square is half a centimetre, so we have one, two, three squares. Three times 0.5 is 1.5. 1.5 centimetres equals F. But, ooh, ooh, we have a problem. This is the focal point that you generally use. Remember I referred back to the previous video. Here's, if we were to make this Cartesian system, or Cartesian, Cartesian coordinates, We'll make this positive x, which implies this is negative x, because you've got to have opposites. So this means this is a negative number, because this is the focal point you generally use um, for convex lenses. Right. The above diagram shows an inverted diminished image. By modifying the properties of the lens or its position, is it possible to create an image that is enlarged and upright? Explain three different changes that could allow this to happen. So I'm going to pause the video and go through the answer and then... Right, so I've said needs to have an object between the lens and the focal point in order for this to happen. So in order to create an upright, enlarged um, image, it needs to be a virtual image as well. I've drawn just a wee rough sketch of the ray diagram just so you can sort of get in your head. Um, but basically the, the object needs to be between the focal point and the actual lens itself. So what we need to do, to do is extend the focal point out. So I've said um, it needs to be between the lens and the focal point in order for this to happen. Decrease the thickness of the lens. This will increase the focal point. Shift the lens such that the object is between the lens and the focal point, you can do that. Decrease the refractive index of the lens, um, that'll increase the focal length. Or you could decrease the radius of curvature of the lens, although that's pretty much the same as decreasing the thickness. Um, so whatever. But for this question, it really helps if you draw yourself just like a rough um, ray diagram, and you only get um, upright uh, images when you upright images when you have the object in front of the focal point.